Hi, this is Maya Basics 1, Intro to Maya. We're going to learn how to walk in Maya before we can actually do anything else. Once you open up Maya, you should get these one-minute startup movies. What we're going to go over today is a lot of what's inside these movies. I'm just going to sort of do my own run-through and show you some additional areas of Maya that we use commonly for character animation. Right now, I'm just going to close them up. The first thing we really want to master in Maya is, is navigation, learning how to move around in this three-dimensional space. So the first thing I'm going to show you is orbiting. If you hold down your Alt key and you click your left mouse button, you'll see this little icon appear. If you drag back and forth on your mouse pad, you can see that you can spin around. You see the grid spinning around, but we're actually controlling a camera in the perspective view. Panning is holding Alt down and a middle mouse button. You'll see when you uh, hold down Alt and when you click your middle mouse button, you'll get this uh, these crosshairs. And when you drag your mouse around, you can pan back and forth, up and down, any direction that you move your mouse. And then zooming. So zooming is again holding Alt down and you can right click to do this or you can middle mouse button left click. But it's probably easier to do just a right click. So right click and drag and you'll zoom in and out. So the combination of these three things allows you to navigate around in Maya and just move around the 3D space. So oftentimes when you're working in Maya, you're zooming in, orbiting, panning around. So all three of these things, and you need to master all three of these before you actually start. Just do that, practice that for a few minutes and just get the hang of it. All right, so let's create a cube. I'm gonna explain the dimensions of space and objects. So you can create an object in two different ways. We're just gonna work with polygons. You can go up to this polygons tab and click that and you'll get a variety of different polygons you can create. You can also go to Create in the menu bar. By the way, you should have this window set to Animation. There's different menu sets here, but right now we're just gonna have that on Animation. Uh, you can go to Create, Polygons, Polygon Primitives, and then you can see you have Sphere, Cube, Cylinder, Cone, all these different primitives. It gives you an automatic uh, piece of geometry. So let's create a cube. You just click on that. You can do this two ways. You can either just left click and you'll just get a cube. You can drag, it'll tell you, my gives you a little message there. You can drag out the, the base of it and then drag up to set the height. It even tells you right there, so it's pretty pretty straightforward. All right, so once you've done that, take a minute and orbit around that, pan, zoom into it, and just get the hang of that. If you look in the corner of your panel here, you'll see we have Y, X, and Z. Those are the three dimensions, and that's why it's called 3D, because we're working in three-dimensional space. We'll just select the Move tool for a moment. Just so you can see these three dimensions. You'll notice when I'm when I'm orbiting around, the manipulator moves with it and it's it's keeping track of X, Z, and the Y dimensions are, are, are pointing in. So if you look in the corner here, you can see these are our, our spatial dimensions. And because I have this cube selected right now, it's showing me the dimensions of the object, it's, its orientation in space, which is the same as, as the actual space. You can see as we're rotating this, if you just look at the blue arrow, that's our Z axis. You'll see that when you when you when you orbit around, it does the same thing in the corner. So the cube is oriented in the same way as the, this three the three dimensional space that we're in. So Y is your up and down. Now anything above this grid is a positive value. So it'll be a positive. Anything up here will be a positive value in Y. Anything underneath this grid down below will be a negative value in Y. So it would be a, show up as a negative number. So you can see up here in your channel box we have numeric values for these spatial coordinates. The Y is uh, represented in green, the X is represented in red, and the Z is represented in blue. So that's our Y axis. The X axis is basically our right to left, and anything to the right is going to be considered a positive value, and anything on the left side is going to be a negative X value. So I'll just move this cube up for a minute. And you can see these two lines. So anything on this side is positive, and on the left side is negative. So it's easy to remember that right is positive, left is negative. So then this is the z-axis represented in blue. Anything in front is going to be a positive z value. Anything behind this black line over here is going to be a negative z value. So let's take a minute to show you how to change your shader. Automatically, uh, Maya gives you a shader, this gray looking shader on this, on this cube or any other object you create. If on your keyboard, there's a few hotkeys I just want to show you. You can go to wireframe by pressing 4. So now you're in wireframe. You can see through the object. Press 5 and it goes back to shader, how, how it creates the cube at default. If you press 6, you won't see anything right now because there's no uh, textures. But if there's any textures on this, 
if you create any textures on, on the objects, you'll see them by pressing 6. And then 7 uh, will show you your lighting. Right now we don't have any lights in this scene, so it's just turning black. So if you render this, it would just be black because there's no lights. So we have to actually create lights. Okay, so let's talk about moving and rotating these objects and scaling. So you can see we already have this move tool selected. On the left side here is our, our toolbar. So at the very top one is the selection tool. Now you can get to that by pressing Q on your keyboard. Right underneath the selection tool is a lasso selection tool. So you can select just very specific areas. This is a paint selection tool. We don't really need that for animation. Uh, the move tool. You can get to that by pressing W on your keyboard. And the rotation tool, you can get to that by pressing E on your keyboard. And then the scale is R. These are your QWERTY keys. Okay, so let's just, we're always going to use our hotkeys. This is because it's, we don't want to go over here all the time. When we start working quickly in Maya, we want to just memorize some of these hotkeys. So QWERTY at the top, it's usually translate and rotate are what we normally use. And we can move an object just by, you'll see as soon as we press W or press the, uh, the move button, you'll see this manipulator appear. And we can grab that manipulator on any one of these arrows. So I can move it up and down in Y. When I do that, when I move it up and down in Y, you'll see here in this, this is called the channel box, this area. You'll see in the channel box the, the Y value, this number, which represents our, our position in space. Go ahead and move it up and look in the channel box. You'll see the numbers start to, to go to a higher value. That means we're going up in a positive Y direction. Now, if we go underneath the grid, as I mentioned before, you see it go down to zero. Once we get to zero, that means we're right in the center. And if you go underneath the grid, it starts to go into negative values. You see the negative four point, whatever it is there. So same with X, positive on the right. And then when we move it to the left in X, it goes to negative values. As soon as you cross this line, we're in negative X territory over here. And then Z, this is the positive area on this side of, on this side of the line. And then we move to the back behind this line. As we move back, it goes into negative numbers. If you want this uh, cube to be right in the middle, you can click on the top value in the text area and just drag to the bottom and release. You'll see that you can type in there now. You can just hit your number pad, type zero, and then enter. It'll change all three of those. Brings it right down to zero. That's moving. You can also, you don't have to always use the manipulators. You can also grab the center one and it'll just move it freely. But be careful when you do that because it'll just move it uh, according to whatever panel you're in. You can see all the values are, are flipping around there, so you're moving it in X, Y, and Z at the same time by doing that. This works. This comes in handy with character animation sometimes if you're uh, working in the camera view and you just want to move something to pose a character, like move an arm or something like that. All right, so rotation, uh, E on your keyboard. It's also right over here in the channel box. You'll see this. You get this rotation manipulator. So it's basically the same thing, X, Y, and Z. So red is X, blue is Z, and green is Y. So if we do Y, rotates it this way, along the Y axis. And if we rotate X, rotates it along the X axis. And then if we rotate it in Z, rotates, rotates it along the Z axis. Let's say we're rotating it in Y. And you can think of it as you're poking a pencil right through this cube, and it's spinning around the pencil. It's one way you can remember it. So if you want to rotate it in Z, you have to think about, oh, if there was like a pole going through this or a pencil uh, being poked through this uh, piece of paper, then you spin it around. It's being rotated in Z that way. And again, you can see in our channel box, if I rotate it in Z, you can see the Z values changing. I suggest that you always use these X, Z, and Y manipulators, but you can just grab it anywhere in the middle here, just so you know, you can grab it and just, and you can just move it around that way as well. All right, so last thing I wanna show you is scaling the scale button on the toolbar or just press R on your keyboard and we can scale in Y if you grab this little manipulator here or you can grab the X scale manipulator and scale it this way and then Z the way that you should be thinking in Maya most of the time especially working in the industry the scenes are set up usually uh, oriented this way think of this as a stage as if you're an audience looking at this stage it's always set up with the Z axis pointing straight at us. So we're always looking at a scene this way. If you think of it that way, then it's easy to remember that X is right and left, Y is up and down, and Z is toward us and away from us. That's the way I always think of it. It just keeps you oriented. All right, so let's set up our layout. I believe we're going to lay out our, our, our interface for animation, and oh, there's a few preferences that you need to change as well before you start animating.
First thing you want to do is go down to your, right underneath this toolbar, if you look underneath it, you'll have some layout options. Mine, are, mine might look a little different than yours because I've, I've made some changes, but right click and go perspective, graph, hypergraph. Yeah, and you'll get these three panels. So this is basically how you want it set up. If you're working with one monitor, this is the way you would want it set up. So I always keep my perspective view here. If you don't have a camera in the scene, I'll just quickly create a camera. If you go to create, you can just go to cameras and just select the camera. There, so we have a camera here now. We can move that the same way we move objects. So if I, now if I go to my panels area over here, I can go down to perspective and we'll see camera one which is what that camera is called. If you select that, it'll change this panel to the camera view. You can see if we move our camera around, now this panel is looking through this camera. If we orbit around in here, it's actually gonna move our camera and you can see it happening in the perspective view. All right, so we'll just set our camera up. I like to always move the camera in the perspective view just so I know where I'm putting it. Okay, so as I was mentioning earlier, it's like we're an audience, we're looking at a stage in this, from this, from the Z perspective. So that's generally how all of our scenes are going to be set up. So you can move objects in the pan, in the camera view as well, like this. Most of the time I'm moving things in the perspective view and just seeing what it looks like in the camera view. The camera view is basically what it's going to look like um, once it's being broadcast or, you know, whatever video you're making, this is what, what, it, what the video is going to render, whatever we see in the camera view. So we have perspective in this panel, camera view in this panel, and down in this panel, this is our graph editor. This is where we're going to be editing our animation. So this is the layout for a single monitor. For dual monitor, this graph editor, I like to have it on a second screen to my right or to the left, just as long as it's on its own screen. And I like to have it large. I'll just expand it to full screen or half screen. But if you're working on one screen, um, just keep it, you can work this way with your graph editor at the bottom. You can also grab these little bars that separate the panels. You can grab that and move it down if you want more space up top, or if you want to see your graph editor better, you can do this. You can also grab it on this side and make your camera view smaller and your perspective view larger, or vice versa. You can also change your panels. You can change any panel by just going to Panels. Under Panels, go to Panel, and you can change any one of these to uh, any other window. Okay, so say you wanted to change this layout. Um, we'll change this to something else under panel. Just say we want to change it to our outliner. And in our outliner, you have our cube here, you have our camera. And this just shows you everything that, that the scene contains. So say we change it to outliner on the bottom here. Then we can go to window animation editors and we can select graph editor. And it appeared on my second screen. You can't see it, but I'll drag it over. So here we have our graph editor. And you can do that with any of those uh, windows under window. You can open up something and just have it separate. And again, I like to put this on my second screen to the right and then I'll animate that way. But for the purpose of this, these lessons, I'm, I'm gonna have my graph editor all on the same screen. One thing to note is you can't have any window open here in, in, the, in a panel and then open uh, separately as well on another screen. So that's why you'd have to change this first, change it to something else and then open up the graph editor somewhere else. Okay, now a couple of settings I'd like to go over. So if you go down to the bottom right area of your screen, right next to the key, you'll see that if you hover over it, it's called Animation Preferences. You can also get to it from Window, Settings and Preferences, and just go to Preferences. And there's a couple things you want to change if you haven't done so already. Go down to, under Settings, go to Undo, and make sure that your undos are set to, they're on, and they're set to Infinite. That means that you can undo as many times as you like without any limit. Um, go to time slider. Mine's on continuous right now. If you have it on continuous, it just means when you play, it's just gonna keep going back to frame one and playing the entire thing. Uh, you could just have it playing on once. It, it just means it's gonna play it once and stop at the end. And oscillate means it's gonna go back and forth. I, I don't, wouldn't think you would want that. So continuous or once is fine. Make sure you have it on real time, 24 frames per second. Yeah, for animation, looking under tangents, it should be default and tangent, default out tangent. You can just keep those on auto. If they're not on auto, make sure they're on flat. Okay, they can both be on flat. But if you leave it on auto, they will be flat. And you'll know more what that means later. But just leave it on auto or flat right for now. So if you made any changes, go ahead and save the changes. I didn't, so I'm just going to cancel it. 
All right, so we have this layout. You can save a layout. We're not going to do this now because there's a few other things I'd like you to do uh, before you save a layout. We'll probably do it in the next class. But you can right click here and go down to save current layout. So however you set up your screen, you can save it so that it creates a button and then you hit when you hit that button it'll automatically pop to your the layout that you uh, that you created. So if you go to save current layout, you get a little window and then you just name it here, press OK. You know, if you open Maya and it's not your layout, you can right click anywhere anywhere on, on this toolbar here in this bottom section of the toolbar and your layout will be named. So you can see mine says Chris single monitor, dual monitor. There's a few other things we're going to change in our layout so don't save a layout yet. We're going to do it in the next class. Alright so as I've mentioned this is the uh, area where you change your layouts right all in here. Above that is your toolbar where you have your move scale and rotation buttons and selections and then above that we have our shelves. These are our shelves. So here we can create curves, sur uh, NURBS surfaces which I don't really use, polygons, Everything in basically in all of these shelves is available up in these menu sets as well. Just gives you a little picture here and tells you what it is if you hover over it. I've created two of my own uh, tabs here. If you want to create your own, which we'll get into a little later as well, you can click this little arrow button and go to new shelf. And then you can just name it here and it'll create you, it'll create a new shelf. I'll just call it test. Press OK. And then you see at the top here you have this new shelf which you can uh, then add your own buttons here. Okay, then along the top, just keep this menu set in animation. If you change this, you'll see that these menus, these menu items will change. So if you go to polygons, you see you have a, a new set of menus. That's more for modeling. And then you have surfaces, dynamics for effects and rendering. We're going to keep it on animation since this is a, an animation course. Then you have new scene, open scene, save scene, all the usual stuff. As we go along in this program, I'll explain more of what some of these are as we need them. If you click this button, it says select surface objects. If you push that button in, now you can't select this polygon or any other objects. It doesn't let you select it, which will come in handy later on. Right now, let's leave it unselected. Now we can select. Okay, so I've already started to describe the channel box here as well. All right, so as we talked about earlier, we looked at the, uh, the move tool and the rotate tool. We discussed the three dimensions. So we have uh, X, Y, and Z. So over here in the channel box, you'll see these three channels for translate. Translate just basically means move. Uh, and you have X, Y, and Z. So say I select this X, this translate X, just select the name. This is the text field that gives you the value for uh, its position in 3D space. And this is the name for it. But if you select that name, and this is just another way to move objects. If you select translate X and you middle mouse button click in space, not on the object, but just to the side of it, say, you'll see that just the translate X appears on the manipulator and if you drag back and forth you can actually move it this way that's called a virtual slider and if you select translate Y and middle mouse button click you can move it this way as well same with Z you just drag back and forth and you can do it for the rotation values as well there's our X rotation middle mouse button drag middle mouse button drag right uh, right and left and you can do it for scale as well and one thing I should probably mention, when you first create an object, it automatically goes to a scale of 1. So if you set these all to 1, the X, Y, and Z all to a value of 1, it'll go back to its original shape. And all three translates and all three rotates, you can drag over all of them, release, and then press 0. And it'll change all those back to 0 and put it back in its original location. And one other thing you probably want to do, I usually do this, is go to renderer at the top, change your renderer to legacy default viewer. The middle one. Yours is probably on a legacy high quality viewport but it's just not necessary. It might bog your machine down a little bit so let's go with legacy default viewport for now. Alright so that's it for this class. Join me in Maya Basics 2 for more.